is CBS News Miami. And good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Jim Barry. Welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Here's a look now at today's top stories. And right off the top, an arrested development. Cops say 18-year-old Matthew Carr is now locked up, accused of committing several armed robberies. Investigators say all these thefts were committed buying and selling products via Facebook Marketplace in the area of South 56th Avenue and Washington Street in Hollywood. No word yet if anyone else was involved in these alleged robberies. Meantime, police investigating a mass shooting in Lauderdale Lakes. Five people hurt there. Police now asking for help in finding the people responsible. CBS News Miami's Jacqueline Quinn was at Broward Health Medical Center in Fort Lauderdale, where all of those victims were taken. I spoke with a mom who told us that her two sons were hurt. They're okay now. They're still recovering, but she told me their age is very young, 11 and 14. It's still not clear what led up to this. Fort Lauderdale police tell us the shooting happened around 840 Wednesday night. The complex called Broward Gardens is near Northwest 19th Street and Northwest 29th Avenue. According to police, a group of people were in the courtyard when another group confronted them. Shortly after shots were fired and the people we spoke with said they heard multiple rounds and that this happened in the playground area where kids were present. We later spoke with a resident who did not want to be identified. She talked to us about how scary this was for her family. Well, they were popping firecrackers at first. It sounded like firecrackers. You don't, you don't really know if it's a gunshot or a firecracker, but it was just like pow, pow, you know, multiple times. So when I ran outside, seeing everybody running, I just grabbed my son, put him inside, and then I, that's when I seen them come around saying, we're shot, we're shot. The latest from Broward Health Medical Center here, they tell us that two people are still in serious condition, one in critical, and two have already been discharged. Charge. And again, police are looking for help in their investigation. Any information or tips, they are asking people to pass that along to them. For now, in Fort Lauderdale, I'm Jacqueline Quinn, CBS News, Miami. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. All right, taking a live look now outside here in South Florida. Look at downtown Miami and boy, another South Florida scorcher broken by some downpours this afternoon. Next weather chief meteorologist Ivan Cabrera with the very latest Ivan. Huge difference now. We talked about this yesterday. The storms that Jim helping us out today. The heat advisory still ongoing. We got plenty of sunshine left in between the storms where we can shoot back up into the 90s. In fact, we've done that already. Current temperatures rain cooled 82 in Fort Lauderdale, 86 in Miami. We had 95. Five, tying the record for it today, mid 90s all over the place. And then the humidity has made it feel well, at one point we were approaching a 107 in town and the 100s continue. We cooled off briefly, but quickly right after that the shower moved through with our sea breeze. We have warmed back up. There's the front as it continues pushing in from the Atlantic that has triggered showers and thunderstorms. Moderate showers right now, really not with lightning across uh, portions of uh, the Florida Turnpike down Davie along 595. And then we have this little cell that developed right along, but you see not not much movement as these storms have continued to develop. And now we have this little pocket from Opelika down towards Liberty City. That's a moderate to heavy shower. And then even further down, this is the bulk of it right here. This is the strongest cell we have. Downpours, frequent lightning, and that, uh, if it continues meandering here, because it's not moving a whole lot, uh, that could be, uh, we could be looking at a flood advisory there. Nothing uh, right now. Rain tracker, though, we'll see this continuing through later on this evening, and then a later finish here. So by the time we get into 8, 9 o'clock, we could have an additional shower storm pop up across the Everglades and then push in the easterly direction. If you're looking for a cool down, the only way we get it is with thunderstorms. We are looking at temperatures holding in the mid 90s. The feels like numbers will be between 100 to 110 uh, each afternoon. So we're just going to have to bear it here until the storms cool us off. But we do have this pattern setting up with a southwest wind that will favor our coastline for showers and storms. That continues tomorrow and then heading into Saturday before the Saharan air we've been talking about uh, tracking a couple of uh, pretty big plumes coming across the Atlantic and that's going to shut off rain chances Sunday into early next next week. Rest of uh, today and then heading into tomorrow. We'll see more coverage. Showers and th uh, thunderstorms will continue to develop into the afternoon. And there is that steering uh, uh, flow that uh, will take all the storms towards the metro. But the good thing about that, too, is that the storms tend to initiate early with the southwest wind, so that I think between 7 and 8 o'clock will be in much better shape if you have evening plans for uh, Friday night. That looks better for you. Tracking the tropics, as I mentioned, it's the Saharan air this time of year that shuts off the tropics. And, well, at times, sometimes our thunderstorms, too. So nothing over the next seven days. 
One plume approaching us this weekend, and then we got another one queued up and ready to go for the early part of next week. This one is the one that arrives on Sunday, a little bit on Saturday, but not enough to shut off rain chances by Sunday, though. We will certainly be not just feeling the impacts, but noticing it as well. The hazy skies will be uh, on the way. There are the good rain chances for uh, tomorrow. We'll have coverage at around 50%, and then that's the case for Saturday before we drop things Sunday and into early next week with the heat continuing in the mid-90s. Pretty steamy. Thank you, Ivan. An update now on the Titan submarine tragedy. Just hours ago, OceanGate, the owner of the submersible that imploded during a voyage to the Titanic, says it has suspended all exploration and commercial operations. All five people on board the Titan submersible, including OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush, were killed in that implosion last month. The suspension of exploration and commercial operations is listed at the top of Ocean Gate's website. When we come back, taking on Twitter, what you need to know about the new social media app Threads and what it means for Elon Musk's company. And welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. The White House responding to the discovery of cocaine near a visitor's entrance and a well-traveled part of the West Wing. CBS News Miami's Caitlin Huey Burns has the latest on this story. We have confidence that the Secret Service is going to get to the bottom of this. As the Secret Service investigates who brought a small plastic bag of cocaine into the West Wing, the White House maintains that many people had access to the area. Where this was discovered uh, is a heavily traveled area where many White House, uh, West Wing, I should be even more specific, uh, West Wing visitors uh, come through. The bag was discovered on the ground floor, according to a senior law enforcement official, in a an area near the entry of the West Wing. It was close to a set of storage cubbies where visitors leave their cell phones during a tour. The indications uh, seem to me that it probably was somebody involved in a tour uh, because keep in mind uh, the Secret Service uh, detailees to the White House and the White House staff are uh, routinely drug tested at random. The White House confirms there were West Wing tours on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. All visitors are vetted and go through security before coming on White House grounds. The Secret Service has a canine unit that checks for explosive devices and biohazardous materials, not specifically for narcotics. Visitor logs and camera surveillance are now being searched for clues. I think in the end they'll be able to screen it down uh, well enough, but there is a possibility that uh, you may never determine who did this. The incident has caused some to question the security protocols here at the White House and how illicit drugs could be brought in. Senator Tom Cotton, who's a member of the Judiciary Committee, has written a letter to the Secret Service Director asking for a plan to correct any security flaws. Caitlin Huey Burns, CBS News, the White House. And now to the 2024 presidential campaign. Supporters of Governor Ron DeSantis' presidential bid released a video that compares his record on LGBTQ issues with that of former President Donald Trump. A prominent group that represents LGBTQ conservatives also went on Twitter criticizing the video, saying the Florida governor cannot tell the difference between common sense gays and radical left gays. Experts say the ad is a way for DeSantis to distinguish himself from Trump, but that comes with a gamble. DeSantis uh, was trying to sell himself as Trump without the drama. And this ad, of course, creates drama. The video slams former President Trump for his past support of gay and transgender people. Governor DeSantis has not made a comment about the ad, and neither has former President Trump. And now to today's Miami Proud. Christie House is an organization responsible for coordinating all child sexual abuse cases in Miami-Dade County. It works with the state attorney's office, police departments, and counselors for each very sensitive case. This edition of Miami Proud is about a staff member who came in as a victim, became a volunteer, and now makes a remarkable difference. Here is CBS News Miami anchor Lauren Pastrana. You know, the beginning step is in the lobby, it's showing them that this is a safe environment. Designed to comfort and soothe, Christy House welcomes children arriving from a variety of traumatic scenarios. We've now rolled out many different types of trauma therapies. So we have um, domestic violence, immigration trauma, um, and many substance abuse, street and gang violence, just many other different type of traumas that 
are here in Miami Dade. Well, let me know. Let's do. Um... Ashley Port is on the development team. She wears several hats, working to raise funds, train volunteers, and greet incoming clients. A lot of our kids show symptoms of anxiety. Um, they're very shut off at that time. So I go up there and I feel like you know I ease that tension. The anxiety goes down, and we just color. We we talk. Just have a normal conversation. She has firsthand knowledge as a survivor. When I was 10 years old, um, I was sexually abused by a family member. She and her older sister both were victims. Their mother refused services offered. Fortunately, she was taken in by another family member. Um, she took me and my three siblings and she housed us, fed us, and she is what I call my mom. She's you know, a phenomenal person. Ashley had some tough times as a teen, but her guardian kept her on track and got her to take college classes. I went to college for a few years for teaching and realized that wasn't the path for me. I didn't want to teach. I wanted to do more than teach and just be frontline with the kids and the ones in need. Uh, so I found my way to Christie House. First as a volunteer at age 18, then later as a young mother, she was hired. She thrives spending her time helping others. Coming back here is actually healing a part of my childhood. Giving tours to donors, running events, providing food and snacks to the clients, all part of the work. But training the new volunteers is particularly hard, as many of them also have suffered trauma. Fortunately, help is available. The healing process isn't over in one day. Being in therapy helps me with those challenging questions, getting out of my comfort zone, and really facing myself and where I'm at, and thinking about where I want to be, which is very important for me. Lauren Pastrana, CBS News, Miami. She is finding a way to make a big difference. Millions of people have signed up for Threads. It is built as a text-based conversation app that some are calling a Twitter killer. Instagram users can link their current account to the new app and follow the same people. Instagram is part of Meta. This is the latest in a growing feud between Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg and Twitter owner Elon Musk. Well, the power of CBS 4 News and CBS News Miami stream are always at your fingertips. We are on Pluto TV, and of course, it is all free. You can also find us on your favorite streaming device with the CBS News app. Then click CBS News Miami. And that is CBS News Miami's quick cast today. I'm Jim Barry. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS Miami.